So today I'm going to be showing you how to root your Nvidia Shield TV. Now this guide is for the 16 gigabyte version on the latest Oreo update and a couple of things you will need to follow this guide. You'll need a PC, you'll need to plug in your Nvidia Shield to your computer via USB cable. We'll also need a USB mouse and keyboard. Now it can be a wireless one but it has to be USB. You won't be able to connect it via Bluetooth during the process. And finally you will need a 1080p display. For some reason, TWRP just doesn't work on a 4K display. As soon as we finish the process though, the Nvidia Shield will be back to normal so you can plug it into a 4K TV. Everything works the same, it's just a 4K TV will not work in TWRP. In terms of following this guide, it's not too difficult even if you don't know what you're doing. If you just follow along step by step and pause as you go, it won't be a problem. So you don't need to be an expert to follow along either. You'll also need some files on your computer, so I've placed links down in the description below for all of them, but it will just be ADB and Fastboot, the Shield family drivers, TWRP and Super SU. But first of all, we're gonna start on the Nvidia Shield. So the first thing we need to do is enable developer option along with USB transfer. So if you go into settings, scroll down your settings menu and you need to go into about. Once you're in about, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see where it says build. If you press this seven times, it will enable developer options. So I'll do it, but you'll see it says there you're already a developer. But once you press that seven times, it will say you are now a developer. And you can see the Android TV version I'm on is currently Shield 7.0.2, which is Android 8 Oreo. So once we've done that, if we head back, we then need to go over to storage and reset. If you go into this menu, you probably won't need to change anything as it should be enabled already, but just make sure transfer files to a computer using USB is actually enabled. Transferring over network doesn't matter if that's enabled or disabled. Just make sure that this one here is actually enabled so it won't let me disable it because I'm already using it. But if we go back, we now need to go into developer options that we just enabled. So go in here, you need to make sure this top option here, enable developer options is checked. And once you've done that, just enable USB debugging there. So just make sure that there is enabled. Once it is, we can move over to the PC. So if we take a look at the PC, I've put ADB in a folder and I recommend putting everything in here as well. So I've got the Shield family drivers and SuperSU and TWRP. Now these two files come as different names. They are very long, so I recommend changing your TWRP to TWRP as I have there and the zip for SuperSU to SuperSU. And the reason for that is just to make it easier to type later. But the first thing we need to do here is open ADB. So if you're using Windows, the easiest way to do this is when you're in the folder, if you hold down your left shift, if you then right click, you'll either have open in command prompt or open in PowerShell. So I'm gonna choose open in PowerShell window here and you can see it opens up the command prompt for me. So first thing we need to do really is ADB devices and that will let us know if we are connected to the shield. So if you just simply type in the command ADB devices here and press enter, it will search and you can see not running, starting now, started successfully, list of devices, that's my Nvidia Shield, but as you can see there, it says unauthorized. The reason for that is because if we now go over to the Shield, you'll see it's asking for permission. So if you're gonna do this all the time, I would recommend ticking the box for always allow, but all we have to do is press okay. If we then head back over to the computer, now if we do that command, it won't be unauthorized and we will be able to use it. It now has my Nvidia Shield identifier and it then says device rather than unauthorized. So we're now good to go. So the first thing we wanna do is reboot the bootloader. So if we go onto this command prompt here, I'll leave all the commands down in the description as well if you just wanna copy and paste them. But we need to type ADB space reboot space bootloader. Once you press that, it will start going ahead. And if we take a look at our shield, you'll see the shield is now restarting. So I'm using some capture card software here. So it's actually resetting my shield. And you can see I've now got this screen here. So this is why we need a USB keyboard and mouse or the gamepad is using the Nvidia Shield remote. You won't be able to navigate these menus, but if you've got the actual gamepad or a USB mouse and keyboard, it will allow you to do so. So now our shield's in this position here. If we head back to the PC, the next command we're gonna need to use here is fast boot devices. So if we just put that in, type fast boot devices and press enter. 
So I've typed in fastboot devices and nothing has happened. The reason for that is I don't have the drivers installed. The easiest way to do this on Windows is use your search bar at the bottom. Simply click on it and search for device manager. And as you can see, device manager comes up there. When we open it, because our shield is connected, you should see the warning sign there, the exclamation mark and the orange sign to say that there's a problem. So that's with Fastboot and exactly the reason it's not working. But as I said at the start, we did need the drivers. So if I right click this and go properties, I then need to go into driver. I can then select here, update driver. And we then get the options here. So I don't want to search automatically. I'm going to browse my computer for the driver software. It then gives me the option to browse. So I've got mine on my desktop. But as I said to you guys, put it in the same place so you can access everything. So I've got everything in one folder. As you can see, it's all in here. And here are my drivers. So if I go back to my device manager, I just need to go into the Shield family drivers here. And go into the folder that says Shield. You can then click on OK. Make sure include subfolders is ticked. And if we press next, you should see it's installing drivers. And as expected, Windows has successfully updated your drivers. So we can now click close, close on that. And if we head back to our device manager now, we should see that there's no exclamation mark, which means it is working correctly. So if I go back here now, and I'm gonna try it again. So fast boot devices, press it now. And you can see it now says fast boot there. So once we've done this, you should get the same unique number as up there, but it says fast boot there. If there's any problems, just reinstall the drivers and try the fast boot devices command again. But of course, anyone who's stuck or you're confused, ask in the comments and I will help you. Then the next command is fast boot space OEM space unlock. Now this will actually wipe your shield. So make sure everything is backed up if there is anything you need. Personally, I've got nothing on there that I need. So I'll just be setting it up after this. But you type in the code fast boot space OEM OEM space unlock, simply press enter there. And if we head over to the shield now, you'll see the screen has changed. If you unlock the bootloader, you will be able to install custom operating system software on this device, but may void your warranty. A custom OS is not subject to the same testing. So we know all that. So for those of you that want to do it, you simply press on confirm. It now says, please wait. At this point, you need to make sure it's finished. So don't go touching anything until it's finished. It should automatically reboot, but quite often it doesn't. So if we look at my computer, you can see here, it clearly says finish total time 32 seconds. Now there wasn't that much on my shield, so it did perform quite quickly. If you've got a lot on there, it will take longer, but we go to this screen here and it just hasn't rebooted automatically. So if it reboots itself, great. If you end up like me with this screen here where it hasn't rebooted, I recommend actually just pulling out the power cable and then putting it back in. But one thing I can't stress enough is do not do this until it's finished. Look at your PC. If you get this screen here, just double check your computer and make sure it does say finished. You do not want to unplug your shield while it's in the process of doing this. So I'm just going to unplug my shield and plug it back in now. So you can see I've now done it and it's come up with this screen here. Your device software can't be checked for corruption. Please lock the bootloader, visit this link. That's just a warning because I've unlocked it. It's going to give me that warning, but it's not a problem at all. So do not be scared of that. But now the shield's going to load back up. And unfortunately, we now have to go through the first process again. So just authorize developer options and give our PC access. So I'll just fast forward it to where the shield has loaded. And you can see, as I said, it will wipe your shield. So you've got to go through the setup. So we're going to go English. Skip this step. We just want to get in there. So it's asking me to sign in. So I'm just going to sign in. Now mine's come up with shield experience upgrade. So I'm just going to press restart to install, go through all of this. And we just need to wait for it to set up. Right, so now we're all back up and running. If we head over to the computer, we'll probably find ADB devices is not working because we've actually wiped the machine. We're gonna to have to allow it all again. So I'll just do it to show you. ADB devices, list of devices attached. There is nothing there. So we head back to the shield. Again, we're gonna to have to enable those developer options. So it's still doing some updates, but if I go into settings, scroll down you'll see my developer options is now gone so again we need to go into about 
scroll all the way down to build. Then I think it's seven times we need to press it. There we go, you can see we are now a developer. So again, we need to head back. Just make sure storage and reset. So just make sure transfer files to computer using USB. Make sure that is enabled. It comes up with this here, USB port one is configured because that's the USB port we have to use. So we go back, now we're gonna go back into developer options. Enable developer options is checked there. And again, we need to enable USB debugging. Again, port one is in use. Okay, so it's not actually letting me enable it there because port one is in use. That's actually the port I'm using, but if that does happen to you, simply unplug your USB cable from port one, enable it, and then plug it back in. So I'll just do that now. So I've unplugged the USB cable. If I now enable USB debugging, Press OK, it's enabled, so I can put that USB cable back into port one. I've now done that, and you can see USB debugging connected, and it's asking me to allow already, so I just press OK. And if I now press back, so we'll head back to the computer. ADB devices again. And you can see we've now got the device showing up. So next thing we have to do now is get back to the bootloader. So that was the command ADB reboot bootloader. Go ahead and type that in into our prompt and press enter. If we look at the shield, it should now be rebooting. Just wait for it to reboot and we're back to this screen here. So now we need to go back to fastboot. So this should work because we've already installed the drivers, but sometimes you do have to reinstall them. So I always recommend just doing fastboot devices first to see if it does work. And as you can see, it says fast boot there. So if there's a problem like there was the first time we did it up here, simply install the drivers again, as I showed you before. But now we need to fast boot the TWRP. So this is the bit that I said at the start. I recommend you put both the supersu.zip and TWRP in here and rename them as I have to make it much easier to type because they start with a long name and it's just gonna be hassled to type that in. And as long as they're in this folder with ADB, you won't need to type the file location so it makes things much easier so I'll just show you what I mean now if we head over here and I'm just gonna have to type fast boot space boot twrp dot image so I'll type that in now go ahead and press enter on that and if we return to the shield you should see it's now rebooting on the computer you can see it says finished And hopefully this should install TWRP. If for any reason it doesn't, just repeat the previous steps. So we'll wait and see what happens. If I've got any problems, then I'm just gonna keep repeating those steps until it works. But you can see here, it has worked. So this bit, you will need the mouse. So this is why I said plug in a USB mouse and keyboard. You can see all of this here, but we really don't need to worry about too much. Just grab this bar here and swipe it to allow modifications. Now, all of these options here, you you don't need to worry about any of them apart from advanced simply click on advanced and then on this screen here we want adb sideload so click on adb sideload and then again nice and easy swipe to start sideload and you'll now see it's coming up here so starting adb sideload feature once we get this screen here we just need to install the super user zip through adb and then we're pretty much done so what we need to do now is head back to the computer while that screen is on there and we simply need to type adb sideload super su.zip but of course again if you name that file anything else you'll have to put in the name so i recommend you just stick to the same file names I have. So adb sideload super su.zip. Once you've typed that in, again, simply press on enter. If we then head back to the shield, you can see it's going through on the computer. If you look at both screens, you'll see it's installing, but we just need to wait for them both to install. We'll look at it on the shield as it's a bit easier and it will show us when it's done. This is another stage though, make sure you don't touch anything while it's doing this. You don't wanna cause any problems. So just let it run through and don't touch anything until it's completely finished. So 
So it says here, first reboot may take a few minutes. It can also loop a few times. Do not interrupt the process. So if it does start rebooting and stuff, don't touch anything, just allow it to go through. And then once we get this, I simply just swipe this install TWRP app, it will reboot and hopefully it all will be well. So we'll just let it do its thing. As we said earlier, it may take a while for the first boot. It may also reboot a few times. So it's not stuck in a boot loop or anything. These things do just happen. But as it said, do not touch it. If you notice it reboots a few times, still leave it. Unless it kept doing it for hours, then obviously you know there's some sort of boot loop there. But generally, you don't want to touch it at this stage because you don't want to cause any problems so we're just going to leave it and I'll fast forward the video until we get back to the Nvidia Shield screen. There we go so it actually only looped once it tried to boot and then looped. One thing worth noting as well is sometimes your controller may take a while to connect if that happens just hold down the OK button but as we can see I've now booted the Shield and everything seems to be OK so I should have Super User enabled now if we go into apps we'll just take a look and as we can see Super User is actually there so I'm just going to add it to my favourites to bring it back to the front. And you can see I've got my Super User app so everything went OK if we open it up. You can see no apps configured, but I've got nothing there, but everything seems to be as it should, exactly what I was expecting. So it has been successful. So if we look at that, upgrade to pro, I don't want to do that. But super user is enabled, so everything has gone to plan. So that's pretty much all you have to do. It's a little bit complicated, and if you're not sure what you're doing, just take your time, pause the video as we go through each step. Of course, if you get any problems or there's anything you're confused about, ask in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I am happy to give you more information if you need it. But as always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and enjoy your rooted shield.